Thank you all for being here. Really appreciate you joining. I'm super excited to have everyone here to chat a little bit about soccer at Success Academies. So let's start by talking a little bit about our presenters. So uh, quick introductions from both Bradley and John. Uh, Bradley is our lead for experiential learning. You're gonna hear from him in about you know, 15, 10, 15 minutes as soon as I'm done talking, as well as John Hartley, who's our senior specialist for soccer. Like I said, my name is Lauren. I'm a recruiter here at Success on the talent acquisition team, currently handling our soccer process. Awesome. So let's start by talking a little bit about success. So why Success Academy? Really big, broad question to kick us off. There are so many reasons. Quite a few of them are listed below. I want to just highlight a few of these. Um, you have the opportunity to make a world of difference for our scholars right here in your community to, to help students develop critical skills like teamwork, critical thinking, discipline, and so much more while developing you know, or coaching, I'm sorry, the sport that you love. We also work really hard to create an environment that's collaborative and rigorous and fun, both inside and outside of the classroom. And we offer some pretty significant internal growth potential for our coaches. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, what those pathways look like, as well as exploring both Bradley and John's experiences uh, as coaches with success. Awesome. So what mean to be a really strong coach at Success Academies? What, what do those qualities look like? We're looking for coaches that exemplify all of these characteristics. I'm gonna talk a little bit about them and how you deploy them on the field and how they make a difference for our scholars. Um, we're looking for people who set really ambitious goals for themselves and for their students, really push themselves to hold those high standards. Uh, we're looking for people who are passionate uh, and confident in their skill set and knowledge within the field. It's obviously also super important that you have really strong planning skills, that you're prepared for anything your scholars can throw at you and are able to manage multiple deadlines and lots of competing priorities. Now, there are instances where our coaches get pulled in a ton of different directions. You might need to help out in the classroom and also you know, hop on the field later in the day. It's important that you're able to switch modes very quickly. Emotional intelligence and the ability to effectively build strong relationships is obviously critical uh, for both you, between both your fellow coaches and your students, um, you know, as well as becoming a lifelong, learning, a lifelong learner is so critical to helping your students unlock their full potential um, and really fostering that lifelong love of the sport. And of course, grit and determination is just as important in playing soccer as it is in actually coaching soccer, that you have a really strong can-do attitude and can come up with creative solutions to overcome obstacles. I think we've all gotten a little bit of a crash course in adaptability this past year, learning how to play sports in a manner that's socially distanced, to learn online. Uh, and so it's important that you come with some creative solutions to maybe some more abstract problems. A little bit more about the structure at Success Academies. Uh, this is a little bit different from some other coaching roles that you may have seen. Um, scholar talent is, first of all, the catch-all term that we use to cover any of our specialty instructional roles, which start in kindergarten and run through 12th grade for everything except for debate. We do not ask our kindergarten through fourth graders to try debating for obvious reasons. Uh, so that can span everything from dance to theater, soccer to track, chess and debate, and we aim to have a mixture of both arts and athletics at every school, though we're obviously limited by physical constraints. You can't offer basketball if you don't have a place to actually practice. Uh, so we offer in-school classes, essentially in lieu of your traditional physical education course that you may be familiar with when you were in school, um, as well as some competitive network teams across our schools. Uh, what that means is there might be days where you spend part of your day helping your soccer scholars in some of their academic courses. Uh, you might be pitching in in the classroom and then out on the field later in the day. Most schools have about one coach per sport, though they will vary from school to school and is something we can discuss a little bit further, how we distribute those between network uh, and in-class roles. Uh, we also have scholar talent managers, featured here uh, at the network level who oversee these programs and provide our coaches 
with the support and structure that they need to grow and develop and hopefully get promoted. So that is most of what we have to cover in terms of the high level overview. So really wanna spend the bulk of this digging into the experiences of John and Bradley. So with that, I'm gonna flip my camera off and open it up for John and Bradley to introduce themselves a bit and talk a little bit more about their experiences before we get into some of our questions that we've received. Well, thank you, Lauren, I really appreciate that. And uh, welcome everybody, we really appreciate you being here and uh, spending some time uh, with John and myself to learn about the soccer program here at Success Academy. We're really excited to share with you all the wonderful things we've been doing over the past eight years and how we're really reimagining the landscape of youth soccer in the United States and, uh, and partnering that with the academic institution that is Success Academy. Um, as Lauren mentioned, my name is Bradley Williams. I'm the manager of the soccer program here at Success Academy. Uh, I've been with the program for seven school years now, heading into my seventh year. Um, previously coached in the program. I launched two of our Success Academy elementary school soccer programs uh, prior to transitioning to the network three years ago. Um, I was previously an associate working with our former athletic director and founding program manager, uh, Boris Bozic, uh, before transitioning into the manager role. Uh, I essentially oversee all aspects of programming from hiring coaches, uh, professional development of those coaches, um, to the general running logistics, setting the vision and philosophy of our program. So really excited to talk to you more about what we do here, to share more about the players and the scholars that we work with, our structure and our vision. Um, and how we're really looking to tackle youth soccer as a whole um, across the United States. So again, welcome. It's nice to have you here and uh, we look forward to sharing more. Uh, thanks, Bradley. Yeah, just a quick introduction of myself. My name is John. I'm the senior specialist of the soccer program. I'm going into my sixth year with Success Academy. Uh, the first three and a bit years were spent as an in-school coach uh, in our school in Williamsburg. I transitioned to the network um, October of 2019, I believe. Um, and I've spent the last couple of years um, here helping Bradley with the general running of, of the program. My roles and responsibilities have changed a lot. You know, we've all been adaptable, as Lauren mentioned, with, with COVID. But going forward, I think it's going to concentrate a lot on the observation, development, and increasing the quality of our classes, coaches. Um, and the, the sessions that we put on within our school setting. Um, so again, just to reiterate what Bradley said, really appreciate everyone being here. Thank you for your time. Um, and we will, uh, we will go from there. So I think it's time to jump into some questions. You guys can either take these together or bounce off of each other. So let's start with something pretty basic. Obviously I gave a high level overview of what it's like to coach at Success, but talk to us a little bit about the difference between coaching at Success Academies and the experience of coaching at maybe a more traditional public school. What do we do differently? Um, and what is the, how does the role look uh, in comparison to other programs? Absolutely, well, I think first and foremost, um, you know, Lauren touched on it at the beginning, we don't have what you would consider a traditional physical education program at Success. You know, when you think about New York, you think about space, you think about access to space, um, it's extremely limited as we can all attest. And so Success Academy, you know, very much had a drive and a passion for offering high quality athletic programs, um, utilizing the spaces that we have access to. So with that, instead, we have basketball and soccer programs um, that are incorporated as part of our curriculum. We have scholars that experience soccer programming as part of their day to day, where they go to English, math and science. They also experience soccer programming, especially elementary school level from kindergarten, second grade. And then as part of our more selective model and uh, elective programming from grades three and four uh, prior to the transition to middle school. So it's extremely um, co-curricular for many, uh, for a better word, in the sense that it's part of the school day experience. Um, we believe wholeheartedly in mastery. Um, you know, we want to have a curriculum and we have built a curriculum over a number of years that is developmental, scaffolded and structured to not only develop soccer skills, but also basic motor skills really making sure that our scholars have a foundation um, to experience life and grow as they develop it uh, physically, uh, social, emotionally, um, as well as technically through the, the soccer component that we teach. Um, you know, ultimately the program over the last eight years has grown significantly. When the program started, we were one school, uh, very much a pilot program when we launched in 2013-14. We currently stand at over 22 coaches 
um, 22 sites uh, serving over six and a half thousand kids. And the scholars that we do serve are currently kindergarten to ninth grade. So it's, um, it's a really fast, uh, vastly quickly growing program um, covering boroughs, the Bronx, Manhattan, and Brooklyn at this current time. Um, but really all encompassing when you think about a soccer program and the kind of the day to day, uh, a very different approach given New York City and just how things are structured. Can you touch a little bit further on how a day in the life differs for a network coach as compared to uh, an in school coach? Yeah, I can take that one. So, um, yeah, Laura mentioned we have two kind of separate roles within the program, uh, what we call an in-school coach and uh, another uh, one that we call a network coach. We'll start with the in-school coach one first. They are based out of a singular school. So we have schools currently in the Bronx, Manhattan, and Brooklyn. Um, you'll be assigned a school and you will work there um, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday within that school um, on a roughly a 9 to 5.15, 9 to 5.30 basis based on, on schedule. Didn't mention Wednesday there because we do have weekend programming. Uh, currently, that's slated to be a Sunday. So we would have typically on a typical week, a Wednesday off um, and a Saturday off with working Sunday. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday and Sunday. If we don't have weekend programming, then we would be working the Wednesday and that would be spent either in your school building or uh, in with your content areas in some sort of professional development. Uh, there's several things that we use those days for. Um, so the day-to-day -day sort of roles within that um, is, as Bradley mentioned, we have, we'd be working out of our elementary schools. So that's K through four. K one and two has it as part of their curriculum. With our third and fourth grade scholars, they um, elect which of the scholar talent areas that Lauren mentioned earlier that they, they wanna pursue from third and fourth grade. Uh, and if they choose the, the athletics, the soccer elective, then they would have that twice a week within their schools. We also have after school programming within the elementary schools for our first, second, third, and fourth grade scholars. And they are the, the kids, the scholars who are really showing an interest, really showing an ability, uh, really wanna play a little bit more. Um, and we'd offer them an opportunity to practice after school uh, once per week. And they are also the kids that uh, practice on the, on the Sundays and the weekends. Um, our network coach is slightly different. Um, they work uh, in our schools for part of the day. Um, so they would be, again, assigned a, a school, but their schedule is, again, roughly a, a 12 till 8 p.m. schedule. So the first part of their day uh, from 12 p.m. till 3.30, 4 p.m. would be spent in the schools. And mostly they would concentrate on delivering the electives part of the curriculum. Um, once the school duties are, are done, they would then transition to wherever the um, the field or the location is for the, the network programming within their, uh, with, with their teams. Now, our network programming is where we have selected the kids in the after school. I know it's getting a little bit complicated, but the after school teams um, within our elementary schools, the kids who are excelling, the elite players there, uh, and again, the ones showing the, the most commitment and the best ability, we would select and create, I guess, a kind of an all star team. Um, for their age group. So we start at U8 and we have teams all the way up to U15 right now. Um, and from the hours between 4 and 8 p.m., they would practice at a central location. Obviously, we'll have kids from maybe five or six different schools. So we select one location, they would travel to that location uh, after school and they would practice there with uh, the network coach. Um, network, uh, part of our teams from the, the older age groups, generally U10, U11 upwards. We do have competitions and games, tournaments, leagues, um, you know, regionally, nationally. Uh, and at one point we did, uh, um, did participate in an international tournament. So there's definitely some great opportunities there for, for kids and coaches uh, alike to have some, some great experiences. I think uh, separate from the, the coaching aspect of what we do, I think that both roles uh, in school and the network role is very much, you're very much part of the school community. Um, you're, you're in the building, you get to see these kids, you'll see them four or five times a week. And if it isn't in your classes, you will see them through the school day um, and in the various things that we, we do and 
that we, we help out with within the school. So I made a list of a few of those sort of things that we do as extra on top of what uh, a regular soccer coach would be doing. So things like a guided reading group, um, you know, proctoring for exams, lunch, recess, dismissal duties, uh, advisors for our older kids within our middle schools, um, you know, support during school events, uh, field days and graduations, um, and other sort of general, you know, one-offs or day-to-day -day things that happen in the school. So it's a real role where you get to develop great relationships and spend a real good amount of time with our kids and our scholars. Um, and obviously over a school year, seeing, you know, a particular kid four or five times a week for nine, 10 months, you can really get to know the kid, you get to know the family, um, you get to uh, learn about them, what makes them tick and develop those bonds and those relationships. And obviously these kids stay with us. Uh, I'm sure we'll get to talk about the trajectory from the, the program from our kindergarten up to uh, our high school teams a little bit later, but you can really see a kid grow and develop um, and blossom within the, within our program. So I think that's a real important thing to take from this. We talk, I know I talked a lot about soccer, but the other aspects of this role within the day-to-day the -day, uh, duties and roles and responsibilities we have um, encompasses a lot of that too. Fantastic to hear. So we'll circle back a little bit to talk a bit more about the growth and development of the soccer program. Talk to us about growth and development opportunities of coaches within success academies. What does that look like? What do some of your training and growth opportunities look like? Um, and how do you develop them into world-class coaches? Yeah, absolutely. I think first and foremost, you kind of have a high quality program with a high quality staff. And I think that starts with the, the process we're going through right now of not only sourcing, but hiring the right people. You have to have the right mindset. We, have, we want to bring in um, coaches and candidates that genuinely are here for the right reasons. I think that philosophy alignment and mindset are you know two extremely uh critical factors in not only bringing in the white people from a soccer perspective but people who genuinely have the best interest of kids at heart and so you know once you establish that and once you uh, um, have that kind of mindset then you're looking to see kind of where we are from a coaching perspective the majority of you on here are very aware of external licenses um just the overall trajectory and pipeline of coach de soccer coach development in the united states if not all over the world it's a very established structure it has been for a number of years um from what you would consider a more specific soccer trajectory whether it's the united soccer coaches federation whether it's united soccer federation um the external license pathway is something that not only do we identify when we are looking to bring coaches in obviously we want a uh, coaches of a certain ilk depending on what role in the program they're going to fill, um, what age group they might potentially work with, um, but also understanding the experiences that they may have had and what quality they're bringing to the program. In terms of our professional development, once you're here, I think it's really twofold. One, success academy-based professional development. Everything that we do internally, we have approximately anywhere between 15 to 20 professional development full days per year which are four eight hour days in which we dedicate to improving the quality of our programming in-house. So Success Academy, as we, we alluded to earlier, not only are we coaching soccer, we're very much part of the school day, we're part of a, a, in a co-curricular environment where we are experiencing classes with scholars who are coming that may not have an interest, may uh, want to know more, maybe have never touched a soccer ball before. And when you're bringing them into this environment, when you're teaching that and, and uh, having them experience that for the first time, there are a number of what you would consider educational skills that you have to have. Behavior management skills, expectation setting skills. Uh, it's really important that from an internal perspective, we teach the success way in many ways of how to do what we do. Content is great, but content comes from good foundational skills um, that we work very closely on. In partnership with that, you cannot have world-class programming, world-class soccer without really high-performing coaches that have the knowledge to connect with you. So not only do we um, help fund licenses and external opportunities for our coaches, whether that be convention opportunity, whether that be external licenses, we also may bring in um, experienced professionals, professionals from the industry, professional players, coaches, um, to share philosophy, who may be aligned with what we're looking to do, um, where our coaches really get to learn. So I think not only is it that we're looking for 
quality people to come in, but once we get them here, how do we then provide them the skill set to not only stay, but also stay and be very successful when they're here? Fantastic. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, we talked a lot about adaptability. Talk to us a bit about how you guys adjusted the soccer program at Success Academies to accomplish what you did during the 2020 uh, to 21 soccer season. What changes did you make and how did you, you know, get the students back on the field? Absolutely. I think that, you know, one thing we have to really point out is that the backing and the support we have from the organization overall is, is something that we, we, you know, really appreciate and uh, cannot be understated. I think that when the pandemic hit and, you know, the last 18 months really um, took a hard hit on everybody, the organization felt very strongly that our scholars had to have a physical outlet, had to continue to have a pathway and opportunity to develop. We've been working with a number of these scholars for anywhere between one year to nine years at this point. And for those that have been with us for a, a substantial amount of time, there was never a doubt in our mind that the pandemic was going to halt their development or that we were not going to be able to bridge that gap. Um, the reality is that from an external standpoint, soccer continued in many ways in the city. And while we are very uh, academically attached, um, we could not serve, we could not not serve our kids um, in, in so many ways. And that gap between their experience and what maybe a traditional, maybe more privileged soccer player may have experienced during that time um, was not going to be a gap that we were going to perpetuate. And so not only did we really attack it from an online perspective, you know, we transformed our curriculum and put it online, um, you know, a, a task that John and I never thought we would have to do. Um, but and then ultimately gaining some real insight into who our kids are from a level that we never understood before. Having insight into their home life and having... Um, a real understanding of the, the community that we are serving um, while also adapting our program to meet the needs of the spaces that we could provide. When we, you know, are working with families who are maybe two or three siblings in a very small apartment, uh, you know, we're not talking about cookie cutter environment here with yards and fields and access to lots of space. You really have to get creative while also hitting on some of the most important concepts, which were really physical and psychosocial. You have to make sure that kids are active had the ability to continue to move and in a constructive way, you know, not just freely running, but developing those physical skills, developing that physical literacy and those basic motor skills, while also interacting with them and their peers um, to bridge that gap socially. You know, it, a lot of what we do and a lot of what soccer brings and team sports in general bring to young people is that sense of community, that sense of character development. Um, and that was, you know, extremely important. From a network standpoint, and John talked about that being our more competitive teams, uh, we pivoted directly from not having access to our own school spaces to external fields. So for those that are familiar with the New York City environment, that meant fields in Manhattan, fields at Randall's Island, fields in Brooklyn, um, that we would not traditionally have to use. We have uh, a plethora of Success Academy-based spaces that we use traditionally to train in. Um, and those were not available to us based on Success Academy opting for a remote option for the entire year. And so once that decision was made, again, we never really saw any other way um, other than figuring out space for our kids. So perfect applications, um, training sessions in person for our network teams continued throughout the entire year. Uh, we're very proud to have said that we've offered hundreds of training sessions, thousands of hours of training in person, um, as well as competitive seasons in both the fall and the spring in which we did have great success. And so it was a real testament to the staff that we have, the leadership we have here, um, as well as the scholars and the parent culture. You cannot transition into a period like we just did um, and expect parents to pivot on a dime the way ours did uh, if you don't have an established culture. And that is really something we're very proud of, uh, something we're looking to continue. And we want to bring in coaches that are able to really um, partner with us in that as well. Fantastic. We're going to open it up to a couple of the questions that we've received within the chat. We'll start with one from, one from James. How many, coach, how many students does a coach typically oversee? Now, how, many, how many students are typically on a team or in a classroom for you? Yeah, I think that differs depending on the role um, and depending on the size of schools. Um, probably in school coaches, um, if they are teaching K to four, a general rule of thumb would be that there'd be three classes of roughly 30 kids per grade. Um, so K1, two, three, and four, um, 90 kids per grade. You're talking 
roughly 400 to 450 scholars within a school um, that you will that you will see on a on a weekly basis. Um, and again, some of them once a week, some of them uh, twice a week, some of them may elect not to do soccer, but you will see them within the school. Um, so that can be a lot of names and a lot of kids and a, a lot of um, uh, eyes that you're serving. For our network, um, for our network coaches, slightly less, I would say. Uh, again, they generally concentrate on the kids who've elected to do soccer um, within their school, and they would be third and fourth graders. But again, it could be anywhere between 60 and 80, maybe 60 and 100 scholars within their school. Then uh, again, and another general rule of thumb is that our coaches would have two teams, um, perhaps three, but again, the, you know, a squad of the, the, the teams, depending on the age group, is again anywhere between 15 and 20. Um, so perhaps 60 to 80 kids within the school, 30 to 50 kids within the, the network team. Um, but because we train on the same fields and we, we see each other on weekends. Like our coaches get to know all the kids on, on all the teams. It's not just their own little bubble. Um, our U15 coach who may also have a U12 team knows the U11 kids because they're gonna be U12 next year and, and so on and so on. So a lot of our coaches get to, um, to know a lot of the kids. It's not just, it seems a big number, but it's even more when you think about it. And our in-school, Coaches also, they might have 450 kids of their own, but on a Sunday, there'll be three or four schools in, the, in one particular site from their after school teams. So they'll get to know and meet another 80 to 100 kids from, from other schools. So there's so many that we serve and that one particular coach will um, have an influence on in the, in the course of a school year. So it really is, again, that's a, another perhaps big difference between the regular club setting of if you have two or three teams of 15 to 20 kids you may see 50 to 60 a week uh you can times that by 10 perhaps uh in the roles that we do i do think it's important to note to john's point there the specific breakdown of classes depending on component so from kindergarten to second grade while there are a number of sections a kindergarten class or a first grade class that you see in the in-school component would be 30 to 35 kids that would be a session of anywhere between 45 to 55 minutes. From an elective standpoint, you're looking at anywhere between 18 to 25 scholars um, in an elective class, which would be your third and fourth. And then from a competitive team, whether that's at the school level or at the network level, you're looking at anywhere between 15 to 22. So very traditional from what you would consider a classroom size when you think about schools, and then very traditional in terms of a club setting when you think about after school clubs and network teams. So structurally, we align very much with uh, the academic and traditional soccer numbers when you think about that. But to John's point, we're very much integrated into all facets of the program and we're very cross content, not cross content, but cross functional when we work with our other schools. So Scott, you know, the impact that we have is vast from an individual coaching standpoint. A couple more questions up in the chat. Start with this one. Does it matter if I have a degree in a different subject area? My degree is in computer science, but I really have always been passionate about soccer. I mean, I think ultimately, no. The answer is, you know, we, we want people that are passionate about soccer. I think the key um, with anything uh, when it comes to making a career choice and pursuing something full time um, is that you have made an investment into your coach education or your soccer coach development. Um, and there are a number of ways to do that. We alluded to kind of the external pathways that you can achieve um, education in. Um, and I think that at this point in where we are with our program, given the size, given the scope, given the experience that we uh, of staff that we already have, we would want to make sure that anyone looking to come into the program has invested that level of, um, at least to some extent in themselves, um, but degree not necessarily playing a huge role into that. Fantastic. I'm gonna combine two questions together here. Are there any qualifications that are required by Success Academies, either specific licenses or anything like that? In terms of specific licenses, no. You know, ultimately we always would um, review a resume based on a number of different things. Uh, uh, an external license or a soccer qualification is only one component. I don't. I definitely don't want to come across that we're only looking at very one component, whether it's a degree, whether it's a GPA, 
whether it's the, the amount of experience or professional experience or an external license. I think it's all encompassing, um, but I think it's extremely important that no matter what career choice someone is looking to make and down, you know, granted that Success Academy Soccer Program is a full-time job with benefits with a salary, which again is totally different than any other uh, traditional soccer organization you're looking at, not only in the city, but just across the country. Um, we want to have uh, candidates that have really invested themselves in putting themselves in a strong position uh, and gaining at least a grassroots if uh, level of knowledge through pursuing educational opportunities that are available, uh, not only very frequently, but also quite simply at this point. Just a few more questions. This one I know the answer to, but I will feel it to you guys. Are there girls teams and boys teams? Do they train together? Uh, is it separate and siloed? Go ahead. Sure. So from a school uh, team level and a, a school level, uh, classes obviously, they come, uh, come to their soccer classes as part of their general classroom. So very much a co-ed environment. Um, and particularly at the school team level, uh, where we are continuing to build that culture, that foundation and that love for the game through those uh, characteristics that John alluded to earlier, um, everything is very much co-ed in the school team round. Once we transition to the more uh, network team, more competitive side of the program, that's when we do break um, and uh, separate the uh, boys and girls, um, not only from a competitive standpoint, but also just to create that uh, environment that is more realistic to what they would experience at a club or an academy level. Um, there are definite benefits, especially to from a character development, a social emotional development, um, from just an overall young person understanding what it is like to interact with, with other people in their school community. It brings a lot um, to have that co-ed environment, but once we step into the more competitive realms, we make that we make that separation. And the last one that I'm seeing here is just kind of a follow-up question around hours. Uh, In-school coaches are obviously working a bit more of a nine to five. The question was, are network coaches working along the same hours? Or are their hours more aligned with those after-school activities? Yeah, so to John's, yes. point, you know, to John's, John's point earlier, um, our network coaches work on a 12 to eight schedule, which is in many ways uh, a more aligned schedule to a traditional soccer coach at a club or academy environment. Uh, I think the major notes to hit on there are that our network coaches do still play an integral role in our school communities. While it might not be uh, for as long a period of time, um, they will participate in activities, whether it be lunch and recess, um, guided reading, academic support, um, in addition to the soccer pieces that they do. Um, and so... While the focus, I would say the, the main objectives of the network coaching role is to develop high quality, high performing players that can compete externally um, and really achieve the heights of a high quality soccer program. They're no less uh, involved in the school aspects of what we do and the character development and social, economic, uh, social emotional development of our scholars in school day. And one more question that just popped in the box. Um, are there coaches that don't have teaching experience in the past and have been able to effectively make that transition? Uh, there's no reference to coaching experience, just teaching experience. Yeah, I think that John and I are kind of a testament to that. Um, I can speak for myself. Um, when I joined Success Academy, I had no prior teaching experience. I had not been in a classroom environment or a school setting before. Um, my background is in sports management and, you know, the game uh, professionally and, and things like that. And so transitioning into a school environment really was more about the opportunity to have a greater uh, impact to really work with a community that is quite honestly being neglected from a soccer standpoint in the country um, and to give back in a, lot, in a lot more ways. I think that you learn very quickly. You have to learn very quickly. Um, I think it's a huge component of any candidate that's stepping into this environment that you have to be willing to put in the effort on those skills that we mentioned earlier, whether that's behavior management, expectation setting, organization, um, a presence, uh, a real um, mindset to learn because in traditional settings, coaches do not experience what they experience when they come here. 
there is very much a, a club soccer development, uh, player development component. Um, but particularly for our school coaches, they are classroom teachers. They are uh, integrated school community members where the skills are more traditional to what you would see from a academic teacher uh, in order for the content that we teach through our curriculum to come out. Um, and so the, to answer the question in a very short term, no, the, the teaching experience is not a, a huge contributing factor. Would it potentially help with the language and the format potentially be a, an advantage? 100%, but it's definitely something that both of us have learned and uh, have adapted to. Now, we do have a couple more in here, but I think we've touched on most of these. Um, so I wanna make sure that we have time for you know final takeaways wrap up from you guys, as well as next steps. So we'd love to hear from both of you, you know, what you really want everyone to take home from this presentation and what your key takeaways are before we move into uh, our next steps, candidates. Yeah, well, I know this is usually Bradley's wheelhouse because he's fantastic at uh, promoting this program and we both feel very passionate um, about it. I think the biggest takeaway for, for everyone on this call is to know that what we're doing here is, is different. If it's a, you know, we have an element of coaching and coaching is the role that you will uh, be applying for and, uh, and hopefully we, you know, we interview and demonstrate on based on your coaching ability, but it just goes so much deeper into that. It's the, kind of reiterate my points from before, the relationships and the time that you get to spend with our kids is, is just like so special and, and so different to, um, to every other sort of role within sports and soccer that, that I've been in. Um, and it is something that we believe in deeply. Um, you know, we, we work really hard every day and it's because of those kids. Um, we, we see the, the successes that they have. And I think I really like Bradley to talk about that on a, and he's much better than me. But when you think about traditional school soccer, it's not what we're doing here. Not at all. Um, and we'll talk, I'm sure he will talk about the successes we've had and who we're competing against. This isn't a, a, a nice after school activity that we're doing here. There's a real tra trajectory for our kids and for the program with some huge goals that we hope that, our, that we can help our kids achieve. Um, from the moment, from day one, and it was day one on Monday for some of our kindergarten scholars, um, to potentially if they stay with Success Academy all the way through graduating high school, there is an opportunity and a pathway to be part of soccer. Um, and when you think about that length of time and what can be created and developed in that, um, and also that's completely free. There's no, there's no charge for our parents here. Um, there's no fees, uniform is provided, you know, transport, um, tournaments, everything like that is completely free again from day one to the end. Like this is a real sort of opportunity for our scholars. And for us to sort of see, especially in an environment like New York City, uh, the kids who wouldn't normally get an opportunity to play soccer that can through our program and see where they can go and really push them to be the, the best that they can be. Um, and I think that for me, the most important thing and kind of touched on it a little bit, but just what we're doing here is very different to what a traditional school, traditional public school, traditional charter school would be doing with a soccer program within it. Um, and I'm definitely not the one to speak about that. So I'm going to hand it over to Bradley, who can whiz through um, and explain a little bit more detail what I mean by that. Appreciate it. I think that, you know, the key takeaways are at the end of the day, this soccer program at Success Academy is changing the landscape of youth soccer in the United States. And it's as simple as that. When we think about access and opportunity, the way in which the country has deliberately uh, eliminated pathways uh, for so many uh, young people who do not have means uh, financially um, it is a huge crime that we do not see more uh, players from neighborhoods such as the Bronx, neighborhoods in Harlem, Bed-Stuy, uh, coming through and not only being successful at the college level, uh, but also at the, the professional and the international level. Um, and that is honestly because of the way in which the structure uh, has in many ways neglected them. If you're looking for a role that is going to be soccer coaching, um, 
that is going to be very um, in and out and, um, you know, something that you've experienced in the past, then this isn't the right place. If you're here to build a career, if you're here to make a difference, if you're here to um, build relationships with communities and, and strong bonds with families, uh, then there's a pathway and a career trajectory here. Um, it's extremely special what is being created. It's extremely special to see the names that of players that we would not have known had it not been for this program. Um, and not only see them succeed in an academic uh, athletic environment, but also see them thrive academically. We are contributing to that through all of the skills that they are learning by being part of this program um, and creating extremely <clears throat> phenomenal citizens of the world um, that will be great no matter whether they are with success, um, you know, once they graduate. And so, you know, the, the soccer piece um, aligns exactly with what everyone's ambition is, as I'm sure as a coach, to compete um, and to develop players and have experiences. John mentioned Barcelona. We went to the Mediterranean International Cup. We compete in regionally uh, alongside clubs and academies um, all over the Northeast region. And so there is a, a role to be played in a number of different ways, but ultimately it comes down to making a difference and changing the lives of young people uh, who deserve access and opportunity. And so if there's any real takeaway from that is if you're passionate about making that difference and being part of that change in this country, um, then there's definitely a program here that is not only doing that, but uh, has a long way to go in terms of serving more scholars who deserve that opportunity as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's for me. Such an important message and such an awesome way to, to wrap up the Q&A portion of this, this webinar. Thank you guys so much. Um, just going to do a quick wrap up, talk a little bit about next steps. You guys can speak a little bit to what a couple portions of the next steps, including our demo. So next steps, if you are interested about a role with Success Academies, which we hope after this presentation you are, that we ask that you submit an application for our soccer coach position. It's available on successacademies.org. Go to our career site. There will be a follow-up uh, email coming from us. If after... Bradley and John take a look at your resume and are excited about your soccer skills, you will be selected for an in-person demonstration lesson. We are taking all kinds of precautions to make sure that our students as well as our prospective coaches are safe. Uh, but we do think it's super important that we see you in action with our scholars and see your coaching skills live. Um, and so Bradley and John can speak a little bit to what that looks like before we talk through the rest of the process. Absolutely, I think it's key in John, uh... Lauren just alluded to it there that we want to see you, we want to get to know you, we want to understand not only your uh, passion and desire for being part of this program, but to see you interact with our scholars and also demonstrate your abilities to coach. Uh, the demonstration portion is a 20 minute portion, uh, in addition to a, full, uh, a fully scoped lesson plan that we would expect you to produce on the front end. Um, that would be provided directions uh, by you in the initial email uh, information from Lauren. That follows, a, uh, follows up with a debrief uh, where we not over go through the session, um, but give you an opportunity to ask us questions and more direct uh, specifics regarding opportunities at Success Academy. And then should your demonstration lesson go well, if you progress to a final converse, final interview uh, with one of, one of my colleagues on the recruiting team, Bradley and John will also be there. Uh, there is a virtual interview process that we're undergoing that really helps to see you as a, a holistic candidate, how you're comfortable uh, both on the field as well as in the classroom. So uh, that more closely mirrors our traditional teaching hiring process. And our start date, we're looking at an early September start date uh, the week after Labor Day. So uh, get ready. We are excited for you guys to join. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, as you can see, my email is along the bottom. Uh, it'll also be sent to you in a follow-up email. So feel free to send those questions my way. Uh, and we hope to see your application soon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you all for being here. We really appreciate it.